Well, my dad bought this place in 1971. I was the one that worked ranches when I was a kid and had fallen in love with it. Now, especially with this fire, there's very little chance of natural regeneration in many of these spots. I've had a working relationship with Don Harland and the Sheep Creek Ranch. And then after the fire, we rode around to try to come up with some ways to start rehabbing things. Zach has a tremendous feel for what needs to be done, you know, for the next 50 years and then how we go about all the different ecosystems and diversity in the, the operation. Fire started right over on this ridge right over here. This is where it really got hot. When you get down in there, there's hardly a living tree left. It's one of the main corridors for the wildlife still, and we're gonna do our best to keep it that way. When fire comes through and burns, communities and landscapes leaves just such a path of devastation. Over the last 10 years, we've lost 17.1 million acres to catastrophic wildfire across the Western United States. There's a feeling of great loss, both emotional and economic. Don was faced with very few options before him. Landowners affected by fire oh, need to have the comfort of, of their working relationship with their forester who we then engage with. We at Mass sought out Zach and his experience here in Montana and the trust that he had with, with the landowner. And that, that's important. Yeah, at different times we have one. If we replant at this point, we might be able to bring this place back. Before Mass, there was just no other option. The seed bank had also been destroyed, and so essentially we would expect that this forest would not come in on its own without intervention. How many, uh, 30 boxes? How many thousand seedlings? 60 boxes. Okay, 18,000 seedlings, that's a big day. Because we are vertically integrated, we can start from the ground up and look for what can be restored and how to do that, searching for cones and seeing what's left to help rebuild that forest again. What we're able to bring is additional expertise to support Zach in operational execution of the project. We work with our landowners to put in place a long-term management plan. The seed that we're planting here is adapted to dry environments. We're dealing with restoring something with the same species as what would have been here before, so we're preserving that biodiversity. The work that we're doing is so essential to restore the forest in the American West. We work with trees, but like this is a people's industry. To get to the point where we're at says a lot about the people that are involved with this project. <laughs> For me, the plantation is a bit hard, but it's part of the work, and it's got to be done. If it rains or if it rains, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard. I like the plantation. It's uh, challenging in new and different ways all the time. We're doing it, we're getting trees in the ground, and that's really, at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. I look at forest ecosystems very intimately, and having a landowner like Don, you know, that I have the privilege to work with and, you know, even call a friend. It's more than I could ever ask for. When you own land like this, you find it, you're in love with it, and it's your responsibility. You're the steward of this land, so you you want to take care just like you would your children or your family. And I'm handing this down to my children and hopefully grandchildren. It's all going to stay one contiguous piece in the future. This place can grow.